before we begin, if you're viewing this on the live stream, uh, you'll see a comment section, and at some points in the service, you'll see a countdown timer when we encourage you to use that. Uh, if you're on catch up at those points, you may want to skip ahead. And on the live stream through other parts of the service, just judge if your comment adds to that point of the service or not. You'll also see a heart. If you click that, it says, ooh, I like that. Um, and other people can see that. And you'll also see a box that says live prayer. If you click on that, it opens a one-on-one -on -one prayer session with someone from the host team. Brilliant, let's jump in. Good morning and welcome to our online church service this morning. My name is Matt Vane. I'm a member here at Holy Trinity and it's great to welcome you. Now today is Father's Day and I'm here in my children's bedroom. I am the father of Maisie. She's four years old and my son Jesse who is one on Tuesday. I love being a father to my two children. Now I'm here also because it's the only spot I could find where there's a bit of peace and quiet. So hopefully that remains the same. Now, Father's Day. It's obviously a really special day for many people. Father's Day is a really special day uh, for me with my two lovely children who I adore and my own father who I love and respect. But for many, Father's Day is a tricky and complex day. It's tricky if there's been difficult uh, parental uh, relationships, um, if there's been a loss of a child, if there's been a desire for a child. Father's Day can be a really tricky and complex time. Um, Vanessa Rue, who's a good friend of myself and, and Sarah, my wife, uh, she has written a blog on the church website that's really worth looking at regarding fostering and adoption. It's really worth checking out, so please do that uh, when you get chance. So, today's service is looking at the whole idea of where God is in the really raw and visceral moments of our lives, which Father's Day can be that for, for some of us. Sean, our vicar, Sean Swinney, is going to be looking at Elijah's life in the wilderness and we'll be touching on how to live and navigate through, through that time. So as we begin our service, I want us to, um, in the challenges that we face, whether, uh, whether we're experiencing joy or sorrow, I want this scripture to wash over us, um, not to deny the pain that we feel, but just to, for a moment, to be um, mindful, really, of the ways in which God um, is at work in our lives. So this is the scripture that I want to use as a prayer for us. It's simply this, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. I had that song growing up. Oh, here's my daughter. I had that song growing up and I loved it. And um, so what I want to do this morning, um, we're going to have a countdown. You're going to have, um, you can comment and say hello to people. But also I want you to post up um, the ways in which you are thankful to God, your father, um, this morning. What are some of the things this morning that you can be thankful for? Go for it.
here's some things that you need to know. Some of the churches will be opening for private or individual prayer, and that's starting on June 28th uh, that uh, St. Michael's in Moncton Coombe, St. James the Great in South Stoke, and Holy Trinity in Coombe Down will all be open on Sunday afternoons from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and on Thursday mornings from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now if you want to go and take part in that, uh, please just be mindful of the signage so that um, you can follow what's posted so that we can um, make sure that these are safe spaces. Alpha started on Thursday um, and so it's not too late to join the Alpha course. Uh, and as well, you may want to encourage someone else to join. It's very easy to join. Simply go to our website at htcd.church. Um, a little bit down the front page, you can see a thing to click there. And you can follow through and sign on to the Alpha, on, on the Alpha course that is running right now, an online Alpha course running on Thursday evenings. Calling all preachers. Uh, we've got uh, training for preachers uh, tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be using Zoom for this. If you've not received your invite, um, please just email me as I'd love to have as many people there that would want to engage with this sort of training. Uh, we'll be thinking about preacher as storyteller uh, tomorrow evening. Thanks. Good morning everyone. I just wanted to um, remind you all that this week is Loneliness Awareness Week and we all know of people who might still be shielding or the people who are on their own can see some people but can't see them very often or people on their own who actually still can't see anyone because they're so far away. So just please be aware of that because loneliness has an immense impact on good mental health. And we know that people who are lonely can easily get depressed and anxious. So make that phone call. Think about really being in touch with someone. And just remember that we're fortunate not to be on our own, which I'm sure all of you think if you're not on your own. But we know that we've had a lot of calls recently into focus from people who are really struggling uh, because of lack of social um, contact with others. So. That's my little message for this week. Um, take care, keep talking, and keep phoning. Bye-bye. So we're going to head now into sung worship. And I realise that for some people, this might be quite tricky because our hearts are wearied. We feel exhausted. Um, we don't feel any real uh, inspiration or, kind of or tenderness to God at all. Uh, for those of us who feel in that position, uh, and even for those of us that feel, uh, feel a heart that's supple and open to God, I just want to offer this very, sh very short prayer um, that I hope will ignite something new in our hearts. It's simply this. Father God, may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let's worship God together. Two, three, four. Let 
faith be the song that comes to storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Come on. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lifted high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. This is what, and this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, Lord. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear not to lie when we praise you. The God who breakthroughs on our side. Forever lifted high. With all creation cry, God, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear not to lie when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lifting high. With all creation cry, God, we lift you up. Oh, we praise you. testimony slot today, I just want to bring to mind two people that are leaving us um, to go and do amazing things in the world. Um, the first is Bridget Carroll. Um, Bridget Carroll writes this, I'm so sad to be leaving Holy Trinity and Moncton Coombe School at the end of this term without being able to say a proper goodbye to many of you. My plans of moving to Mexico and joining a ministry team there have been put on hold, but all my trust is in the Lord and I know that he will show me when it is the right time to go. In the meanwhile, I'm moving back to Norfolk to wait, work and wait whilst being closer to my family. My details are in the church directory if you'd like to keep in touch. And then as well, so Bridget Carroll, who's, who's um, possibly uh, moving to Mexico to do ministry there, but also um, Anna Charles, 
um, is looking at heading off to do to do mission as well. And so here's a, a video from Anna. Good morning, my Holy Trinity family. Um, I miss you guys so much and I really hope you're all doing well. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna Charles and I've been going to this church since 2013. Um, I've just finished school at Moncton Coombe um, and I'm, I'm currently living with my parents in Huddersfield um, but continue to pray for you all and uh, really hope to visit you guys soon. Um, I just wanted to let you know about my plans and aspirations um, for next year, for my gap year, um, and that I've been accepted onto a gap year placement with CMS, um, the organisation that the Charlins are with, um, who are mission partners with um, our church, Holy Trinity, um, and I just would love you all to pray for me um, in this journey of seeking God's guidance and wisdom in what to do, especially at this time where everything is very uncertain um, and I'm just really excited for this journey into mission um, and I really pray that I'll be able to come and talk to you guys soon um, really about mission because I'd, I'd love to let tell you all about my mission experience and everything but I would until then I would just love you all to pray for me um, and yeah lots of love to you all thank you so much um, for everything you've done for me lots of love Hello all, my name is Dave Joyce and I'm the Director of Bath Youth for Christ. We are back out on the streets providing detached youth work for young people across Bath. We've been out in the city centre and in Snow Hill as well and hopefully in the next few weeks and days we'll be uh, providing youth work in uh, Peasdown, Timsbury and Southdown. COOF is an organisation that supports young people and their calls are up 33% this year compared to last year. Also, child abuse is up by 69%, and sadness is up by 153%, and finally, loneliness is up by 43%. These are all really sad statistics, and this is why it's so important that we re-engage with young people, not just through the use of Zoom, but actually meet them face-to-face, -face, even if we have to social distance. Okay, so these statistics are all quite sad, and however, we are Christians, we are people of hope, and we want to encourage young people. When I went out to the city centre the other day, I met some young people. One of them I knew slightly uh, for a school that I'd worked in, and she, she was meant to have sat her A-levels, and you could tell the sadness um, in her face, and in her friend's face as well, that they weren't able to sit those exams, and just the sense of not having the summer that was expected after A-levels. Although we only talked to them for five or ten minutes, I thought that was really, really important. And hopefully we can do more on this in the coming weeks. So finally, just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who continues to support us. Um, do, we do ask for your prayers. And God bless, and I'm sure we'll see you soon. Lord Jesus, we begin by acknowledging that you are the creator and sustainer of all things, both in heaven and on earth. During this difficult time, with such great pressure on so many people in our society, we want to start by bringing before you world governments as they seek to navigate their way out of this crisis. We pray for our own government, that you would sustain all the key decision makers, give them the energy, stamina and wisdom that they need, and may they look to you for guidance as they seek a way forward for our nation. May they and we continue to ask ourselves the difficult questions in relation to attitudes towards racism and prejudice in our society. We continue to pray particularly for the doctors, nurses and support staff on the NHS front line who are putting their lives at risk on a daily basis. We pray for encouragement for them and their families, as well as physical and mental resilience as they continue to sacrifice so much. We pray for all those who have lost family members and friends and are grieving at this difficult time. 
We also lift up the elderly and all those living in their own. Please help us to be aware of those who are lonely and struggling and to make contact with them. We pray for all children in our nation, currently unable to go to school and missing out on contact with teachers and friends. It has been particularly hard for children, teenagers and university students at key points in their education. We pray that there will be some closure for them all and that they would know your peace. We pray again for a spiritual awakening in our nation. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be working in the hearts of all those who do not know you and bring them into a living faith. Father, we pray for all church leaders weary after managing three months of lockdown. We ask for your richest blessings on them and we lift up Sean and the team at Holy Trinity and the wider benefits as well as their families to you. On Father's Day, we thank you for fathers and acknowledge that this can be a very difficult and painful day for many people. We pray for all fathers in our community and ask for your blessing on them as they juggle many responsibilities at this particularly challenging time. Amen. So we're going to head back into an extended time of worship. But before we do that, let's pray together. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence, let the light of your love shine in our hearts always and your praise be ever on our lips. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. Amen.
his communion and in your holy church i believe in the resurrection when jesus comes again for i believe in the name of jesus i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son
when breath, when breath grows still and night draws near, I will not be afraid, for I Thank you that your love can be experienced anywhere in the world. It can be experienced in our living rooms as we're watching a TV screen. It can be experienced in our children's bedrooms. It can be experienced in the darkest remote places because your light shines. Your love extends to all people. God, I pray once again for, um, for you to ignite our minds, our hearts uh, into new... Uh, life-giving forms of action into uh, life-giving ways of, of acknowledging and perceiving you, just perceiving you as you, who you truly are. Thank you for your love. Uh, through the Holy Spirit that you've given to us, through Christ, your Son, who you've given to us, thank you that we can know you. Amen. So we now come to our Bible reading. And our reader today is Peter Houston from St. Andrews, and he's reading from 1 Kings 19, 1 to 18. And then following that, we have our vicar, Sean Swinney, speaking to us today. 
Today's reading is taken from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from abel to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Let's pray. Father, I ask uh, that as I share now, uh, that you would use me, uh, that you would fill me with your spirit, that you would help um, what I say and how we reflect on your word, um, to connect with people's hearts and minds now, and even that your spirit would be at work in many places as your word goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I wonder, I wonder what you are passionate about. Like, what has God called you to? What can you pour your life into? See, I want you to know what this is and to spend yourself in such a way that you have a lasting impact. Not impact for a moment, but a sustained, lasting impact. You see, you can pour your life into many things. And you could come up with your own list. Uh, serving others, serving the poor, training up children or youth, loving the unlovable, encouraging others, being generous. You could use your talents with people or with money or with words. 
You might be a prayer warrior, a worship leader, a person that delivers food, or a person that's always on the end of the phone for others. What are you passionate about? What has God called you to? What can you pour your life into? This will look different for different people. What about you? So I wanna, I wanna start by throwing us into some things this morning with a personal experience. And I'll focus on the example of leading a church because that's where I'm at. Um, but I want you to take your own situation um, and you'll, you'll see parts of what I share, principles from what I share that I imagine will apply hopefully into your situation. At university, I studied to be leading a church. Uh, in my final year, I met Dwight. Uh, Dwight had just started his ministry in a Pentecostal church near to where I was studying. And this was the sort of church where preaching is like a form of cardio, right? Where you shout and you bang the pulpit. And Dwight would preach Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, every week. Dwight was just a little ways ahead of me. Um, he was in his mid to late 20s. Uh, he had a young family. Uh, the church that he was leading was too small to offer him a salary, and so he took an extra job to make ends meet. Initially, I thought Dwight was living the dream, right? What faith Dwight had to be willing to live on a small income to pour his heart into this church. Over that next year, uh, we built a friendship and I watched this man fall apart. He started with passion that turned to apathy. His physical health deteriorated. He couldn't handle the stress of the job. He would tell me things like, this is like, I think this is almost word for word something he said once, did you know that pastors have seven years less life expectancy than other professions? And whether that's true or not, he believed it. And it left me wondering, did God call me to this? Has God called me to the stress and agony that I can see in Dwight? Could that really be God's plan? You think I would have learned something, but that next September, I started my first full-time position in a church as a youth pastor, and I did the exact same thing. A year and three months later, I was so stressed that it would take me years to process my bitterness toward God. Was it God's fault? No. I simply didn't know how to handle the demands of church life in a way that would keep me healthy. You see, passion can carry you for a year, or adrenaline can carry you for a year. Passion with wisdom and moderation will carry you for a lifetime. And so for people that lead churches, there are dramatically different stats that get thrown around. Some stats are super negative, like years off of your life. And other stats, by the way, Joe and Alexa Karras, don't worry, it's okay. Other stats uh, would say things like that people who lead churches have some of the highest job satisfaction. And it makes you think, how can the two live together? Or, do they, or do, are they, do they both coexist in different people? And obviously that's complicated. And see, often I see church leaders in two very different places that, you'll, that will make sense. The one is I see church leaders that are pushing too hard in a way that is unhealthy and can't last. And the other thing I see sometimes is church leaders that have settled into a way of doing ministry that is fruitless and half-hearted. Both are incredibly unfortunate. And then we come to Elijah here in 1 Kings 19. He's full of faith. He's an example that we should aspire to. And then in 1 Kings 19, he crashes. I love the honesty we find in Scripture and here in this passage. We're with Elijah in his highs, but also in the lows that follow. And here he gets so low that he says, I wish I could die. 
I want you to know what God has called you to. I want you to pour yourself out. I don't want you to go so far that you feel like this. You see, here Elijah, I think, becomes a cautionary tale that many of us can identify with. When you come to the end of yourself and when your judgment is clouded, Elijah says, I'm the only one left, when surely he knows he's not the only one left. Elijah is one of the most significant leaders in Israel at the time. He said three years of struggle and on the back of this big win that we looked at last week, he wants to just give up. Ahab and Jezebel can win. Many of us have felt this way. As I said, for me, it was years of bitterness towards God that I had to process. Or years that, for years I had to process that bitterness towards God. And it wasn't God's fault, but it, with my emotions, I couldn't see that. Some of you have poured yourselves out towards something that is right and good and then said, I'm never doing that again. And so I want you to see here in 1 1 Kings 19 what Elijah needed in the midst of his distress. The first thing I want you to see is that he needed rest and food. It's not complicated. He needed to sleep and eat and sleep some more. Look at it in verse 5. Then he lay down under a bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. He needed to sleep, eat, and sleep some more. For many of us, this season even, has been a very difficult season of change, great change, and anxiety. Can I encourage you to be generous with yourself? Take time to sleep and eat. Maybe not under a bush. (laughs) You can find a more comfortable place than that. So the first thing we see with Elijah here is he needed rest and food. The second thing we see here is that he needed to meet with God. And now this is a profound passage uh, in verses 11 and 12. And I almost don't want to put words to it because I don't want to take away from how profound it is. But let me, let me read just that, that key passage, verses 11 and 12. It says this. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Notice that God here isn't where people expect. Like a powerful wind that tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks. That's power. An earthquake, a fire. Then God shows up in a gentle whisper. Let me add that you need to slow down to hear a gentle whisper. The first thing Elijah needed was to rest and eat. Second thing he needed was to meet with God. And the third thing we see here is that he needed help. See, in verse 15, we read this. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint the king over Aram. Verse 16, anoint the king over Israel. And then later in verse verse 16, anoint Elisha um, to succeed you as prophet. And then as well, it goes further in verse 18, where Elijah thought that he was on his own, that he was alone says there that there are still 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. And what I get from this is Elijah needs to anoint other people to what they're meant to do and needs to uh, essentially bring up Elisha. It's not just about Elijah. He needs to depend on others. He needs to let his ministry continue beyond himself. He's not alone.
And throughout this passage, we see that God is very much at work. God sent angels to comfort Elijah. He invited Elijah to meet with him. He strengthened him for 40 days and nights. He invited him to the mountain of God. He invites Elijah into the cave, probably similar to the cave or where Moses met with God. He corrects his misunderstanding that as if he's alone, but actually there's 7,000 have not bowed the knee. He teaches a lesson to him and speaking to him by a whisper and then sends him back to the northern kingdom. See, for many of us, what can happen is either we settle for a life that isn't what God has called us to, it's safe, or what happens is we go off the other direction. And instead what we do is we pour ourselves into something, but actually we find that we can't maintain it. We need to find a middle way, a way that is healthy, that is with moderation, that has wisdom, where we pour ourselves out in such a way that we can do it for the long haul. Don't know if you've ever seen these sort of, um, you can look on YouTube and it's fantastic to see some of these world records that have been made um, in putting dominoes up so that one knocks over the next one and the next one. You could see like 50,000 dominoes. What's interesting to me with that is that you could take, you know, for example, you might get excited about that and, and you know, well, you probably don't own enough dominoes, but, um, and you could for an hour think, I'm going to set up the most amazing set of dominoes. And maybe after 10 minutes, I think I'd probably get bored with it. Um, but maybe you push through to 20 minutes or you push through to an hour and it might be impressive what you're able to do. If you're going to set up 50,000 dominoes, that's going to take a super long time or a very big team. But what's impressive to me is the impact of perseverance, the kind of, of, of consistency, the power of what, um, what something done again and again and again can do. Or sometimes you'll walk these stone paths and you can see from a hundred years of wear, you can see how it's worn away the stone. That doesn't happen in a day. You see, what I want for you is for your life to make a massive difference because of consistency and persistence in doing what God has called you to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the example of Elijah. I thank you for his faith. I thank you for the ways that he was willing to stand for you. I pray that you would help us to stand for you as well. Pray that you would help us to be filled of, with faith. Pray that you would help us to know your calling on us and to pour ourselves out. But I also pray that we would learn from Elijah's low points. That we would learn um, wisdom. That we'd learn how to respond when we, when we need to be generous with ourselves. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sean, for your word today. So let's, let's pause for a moment and reflect just briefly on what God may be asking and calling us to do. Allow me to pray this prayer. It's from the Northumbria community. It's this very special worshipping community that my wife and I had the privilege of attending a number of years ago. And this prayer is a combination of a number of psalms. So as I pray this, I encourage you to just close your eyes, to be still um, and to respond to God um, in the ways that this, this, these psalms collectively call us to. So let's, let's pray. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? In the shadow of your wings I will sing your praises, O Lord. One thing I ask, it's the one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of my God to gaze upon your holy place. 
In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O wait for the Lord, have courage and wait. Wait for the Lord. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. Amen. Let's sing our last song together. for the presence be still for the presence of the Lord the Holy One is here come out come out before Him now with reverence and Oh. 
So I'm going to offer a blessing again from the Northumbria community to finish. And uh, afterwards, don't forget to join in with one of our Zoom club chats. This is a chance for you to grab a, a hot drink, to catch up with some friends, uh, or get to know some new people that maybe you haven't met before. Um, the links will be up shortly. And so feel free to go and head over to, to one of those Zoom chats. So let's pray to finish. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you as you head into this new week and we'll see you on Sunday.